Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. One of the most talked about new films is Eighth Grade by comedian Bo Burnham, who is making his writing and directorial film debut. It also features a breakout performance by Elsie Fisher, who plays an eighth grader who struggles to finish her last week of classes before beginning her freshman year in high school. And I caught up with Bo here at the legendary Sardis. I said one more week of eighth grade, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, huh? I can't believe you're gonna be in high school. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? I don't know. You excited? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm very excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> So listen, congratulations on 8th grade. Thank you. What a sensational film. How did you come about to write it? I just wanted to write about what I was feeling at the time. I was feeling anxious and I wanted to write about sort of the internet and what it felt like for me to be alive right now. And the more I thought about it, the more I think I realized I was feeling like a 13-year-old girl. Which is, you know, <laughs> that's cool. So when did you start writing it? Like how long was the uh, Early 2014. And, and it was, the first draft was pretty quick, like a couple weeks. And then I was trying to get the money for a long time and then was just returning to the script every three or four months because the internet plays a huge part in it and it, it, the internet ages like milk so you have to yeah. keep updating it as you go. You know, we have a lot of young directors um, watching here at Broadway World. I mean, mm. how did you get this greenlit? I mean, how did you go about having the film made? It was tough. I mean, I was in a lucky position where I, I had another life as a stand-up, so yeah. I was trying to get the money for, you know, three years. Then eventually I put this last special I did called Make Happy on Netflix, and then I felt like I had enough momentum right then to try to get some money. Um, but actually, yeah, I, it's, Scott Rudin actually yeah. had read a, another script of mine, said he wasn't even familiar with my stand-up. And, and that's how it happened. So it's really just like, be patient and you know, it can, it can take three or four or five or six years and then you know, it can just out of, all of a sudden it was just happening. You know, yeah. I thought it was dead and then a month later it's, it's going. And then boom, here it is. Yeah. So what's it like for you being caught up in this world when, I mean, everyone is falling in love with this movie. It opens nationwide. Mm, yes. Is it today? Yes, today. It's out nationwide today. Yeah, so what does that mean It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm still like in it, so it's a yeah. little like trying to describe the air around me or something. I'm, I'm a little, so maybe in a couple months I'll be able to process it better. But I'm just trying to hold on to the earth. I love that. You know, you capture the character of Kayla so well. Mm. When you first started writing this, did it go back and forth if she was going to be a boy or a girl? No, no, it was always a girl. I mean, I, I just related more to the girls that age than I did the boys, especially just what they were kind of talking about online. They, they just asked slightly deeper questions of themselves. And I also wanted to do a story about a young person today that wasn't a memory and wasn't a projection of my past experience, because I think something different is happening right now. So when it was a girl, I got to just see this other person. And it was a, bo a boy, I just kept projecting my own experience onto it. So I, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah. So did you watch a lot of people on YouTube, like yes. kids who, because you know, kids talk a little differently today, mm. at least from when I grew up. Maybe yeah, it's the yeah. same when you grew oh, up. Oh, no, no, no. It's different yeah. than 10 years ago for sure when the YouTube started and I was on it, which is like, yeah, I watched hundreds of videos of young kids talking about themselves. The boys talked about video games and the girls talked about their souls. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is going to be about a girl or... I don't think the boy movie would be as interesting. Yeah, make a really good screenplay yeah. for the girls. Yeah, exactly. Sense. So, um, Elsie Fisher, who plays Kayla, what a breakout performance. I mean, mm. how did you find her? You know, I was just, we just had a really wide search and, and brought in hundreds of kids and she was the only one that, you know, the character's a, you know, ostensibly sort of shy person and everyone else that would walk in, it felt like a confident kid pretending to be shy and when she played it, it felt like a shy kid pretending to be confident, which is what the actual role is, you know, shyness isn't net passive, it isn't cowering in a corner and not wanting to speak, it's actually wanting to express yourself at every moment and not being able to. So she understood that, she just, when she read it, it felt active and it just felt natural in a way that uh, it's very, very hard for an actor of any age to do. You knew right away when you saw her, right? Yeah, I tested her seven times because I never saw another kid more than once. But I tested her seven <laughs> times just because I needed to prove that she could do it because the movie is, relies so heavily on her. I needed to prove that she could do it day after day after day. Um, but it was like, it was, I remember writing it for her, which I didn't, because she was like 11 when I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you only let her read the full script once? Yes, yeah. Tell me why. Um, well, I definitely had her read the script once. Her and her dads, they were familiar with the content and making sure that was okay. Um, 
but I didn't want her to overcook it in her head. I didn't want her to process it too much, and she has an incredible like photographic memory, so she could just get this. I would give her the sides on the day we were yeah. shooting, just so because I she was so ready and she was it. It was so good in the auditions. I didn't want her to have to over rehearse and, and overthink it too much, rather than just show up every day and sort of just throw ourselves into whatever we're doing. Because no. same thing for me yeah. too. Uh, the best advice I got was from Scott Rudin, who said, "Don't direct this thing a hundred times in your head before you show up. Like, be open to what presents itself in the day to you." So that was important to keep that spontaneity alive. Okay, so let's go back to directing. So here you are. I know you've directed TV specials and things for other people, yeah. but let's talk about you have this big film now. Here mm -hmm. you are. So how challenging was it? How rewarding was it at the same time? It, I, I knew it was going to be very, very challenging, and it was very, very challenging, but I, I was desperate to collaborate with people. You know, I grew up doing theater, and that's what yeah. I love to do. That's sort of how I fell in love with the arts was working with other actors and cutting scripts and staging scenes, and then I fell into stand-up and tried to drag all the things I loved about theater into my stand-up, and then sort of in the terms of, over the course of filming my stand-up, I realized that I think directing a film would sort of pull together everything I loved about it. So it, it was incredibly rewarding just being able to collaborate and rely on other people and work with the young actors. Um, yeah. Let's go back to growing up. You started to talk about um, falling in love with theater. How old were you? Fifth grade, sixth grade. Because you come from a sports family, right? Sports family, heavy sports family. And my father would like cheer on my theater as if it were sports. He would go to like five productions of A, <laughs> the, a Winter's Tale, which is Shakespeare's worst play by far. Sorry, sir. Um, uh, yeah, which is this a horrible, horrible five act comedy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth, and then I studied all in high school, and then I was going to go to Tisch for yeah. experimental theater, and then I dropped out to do stand-up. All right, so, but you started on YouTube. Mm. How did you, like, do that? Was it for your family, or how did you start doing YouTube I did it for videos? my brother, just to show my brother, because in 2006, no one knew what YouTube was, so yeah. it really was like, I want to show this thing I made to my brother at college, and people were like, there's this site called YouTube where you can post a video. So, at that time, the sort of, like, paradigm of the internet or viral stuff didn't exist at all. So I was just, I didn't even know, I kind of fell into it. But then once it sort of took off, I kind of realized that, oh, this could be a way to perform live and to do things live, and yeah. At what point early on in that experience did you realize, oh my God, I had people watching me? When it, when it, ha it, it got like 250,000 views in a day or something, and that was like, <laughs> uh-oh. And, and, and comments that were lovely. Not, not yeah. lovely. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right, then going into stand-up. Mm. I mean, you play for like thousands and thousands of people, and mm. you have a, a big like young girl following too, mm. right? Who relate to you? Yes. I well, mean, that's part of the movie. Was a lot of people told me I was a comedian for thirteen-year-old girls, and then I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, I am. And I'm gonna make a movie about them. She's different generation than us. She's, she's not right a different generation. Yes, yeah, she is. She's four years younger than us. I mean. Okay, but people who are like four years older than us felt like fucking. 50 years old. That's like blatantly not Your true. sister? My sister just sucks. Okay, but like, on top of that, she didn't have Twitter in middle school, and we did. That made us different. Okay, well, you're not different than us. Well, yeah. When did you get Snapchat? What grade? Fifth grade. Fifth grade? Oh. What? So have you met some of the audience members? Have you done a lot of Q&As at the theater? Yeah, it's been nice. Yeah, people What's that been like for you? Tell me. I mean, just... Cause it's it's good. Been, so touches people. Yeah, it's been nice. I think, yeah, I think it, 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 it's a very visceral movie for people, which we like, you know? I think they go in expecting some, like, little cute twee movie about a girl, and I think it's a very, you know, ex it's meant to be very experiential. Um, so that's nice. Yeah. Because I think that's the most awkward period for anybody, the period that you <laughs> captured in this, and everybody has gone through that. Yeah, I mean, my most awkward time was actually sophomore year of high school, but whatever awkward time you have, like, eighth grade was not ideal. I don't think eighth grade was ideal for anybody. Yeah, no, no, thing, no, right? no. It's not meant to be ideal. It's meant to be rough. That's the point. It's like, it's meant to suck so you can yeah. prove to yourself that you can get through sucky things. Would you like to direct some more? I would love to, yeah. If I have an idea, I'd love to. Um, but it'll be the idea that has to lead. And I don't think I'd ever direct something I didn't write, so I'd have to probably write it. I, could, I would write something I didn't direct, but not the other way around. What about coming to Broadway? Would you like to come to Broadway and something? I would love to. I mean, I would love to direct a show for the stage, write a show for the stage. That would be, I'd love, love to do that. But that's a large, huge, multi-year endeavor, so. Well, it's already out there to fans of Broadway World, so they can yeah. be like, yeah, come to yeah. Broadway, come to Broadway. Awesome. You know, 
as a filmmaker, what do you hope audiences leave with after seeing this film? Just feelings, really. You know, the movie's not trying to tell you anything yeah. or have a conversation for you. As long as you feel something, we're just trying to give you the raw materials to have a conversation, not the actual conversation. Just say, this is what it feels like. Hopefully, we're just trying to sync your heart rate with hers throughout the course of the movie. So we just want you leaving feeling, and then, you know, you can talk and think whatever you want. Yeah. What's next for you? I don't know, I'm not a great multitasker, so when I this is that. over, I'll just take a breath and try to bang my head against the wall and figure something out. Well, you deserve all the success well, that's really coming your way, Richard, and is coming you. your way Thank you, Richard. with this film. A real pleasure, Appreciate it, thank you.